of the 9th of July 2011, South Sudan gained independence from Sudan after more than two decades of arms conflict between the North and the South. At the heart of this conflict was a man known as Dr. John Garang de Mabio. However, just months after signing a peace agreement with the government in Khartoum, his body was found in a wreckage of an aircraft after it crashed in the remote mountains on the border with northeast Uganda. These incidents happened on the 30th of July 2005 as the Ugandan presidential helicopter was flying over the mountain range between Uganda and Sudan in bad weather. A mysterious and deadly accident occurred and the helicopter crashed, killing everyone on board including Sudanese newly appointed vice president and president of the autonomous region of South Sudan, John Garang Dimabio. Garang was seen by many as a charismatic liberator and by others as an intolerant autocrat. In this edition of Hispul Media, we revisit the story of John Garang Dimabio, the charismatic but battle-hardened South Sudanese rebel leader of the SPLA who died in a mysterious helicopter accident. Please come with me, Gabriel here. John Garang Dimabio was born sometime in 1945 into a poor Dinka family in Wangule village in the Upper Nile region of Sudan. His parents died early and by the age of 10, he was already an orphan. But a relative undertook to pay his school fees and his school expenses. Garang attended school in the city of Wau and subsequently in Rombek. In 1962, he joined the First Sudanese Civil War, but since he was so young, his leaders encouraged him and others of his age to go back to school in order to create a better future for themselves. But owing to the ravaging war in his country, John Garang was forced to complete his secondary education in Tanzania. He graduated top of his class and received a scholarship to study abroad. Garang seized this opportunity and went on to graduate from Greenell College in Iowa, USA with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics in 1969. His love for books made him popular in the area. After completing his program at Greenell College in Flying Colors, John Garang received another scholarship to pursue graduate studies at the University of California in Berkeley. But he opted to return to Tanzania to study East African and Cultural Economies as a Thomas J. Watson Fellow at the University of Dar es Salaam. At the University of Dar es Salaam, he was a member of the University Students African Revolutionary Front. However, after finishing this program, Garang eventually decided to return to Sudan and join the Ayanya rebels. In 1970, John Garang was among the soldiers sent to Israel for military training by Gordon Mortad Mayen, the leader of the Ayaya Liberation Movement at that time. By 1972, the First Sudanese Civil War had ended with a Disababa Agreement and John Garang, along with many other rebels, was absorbed into the Sudanese army. For 11 years, he was a career soldier and rose from the rank of captain to colonel after taking the Infantry Officers Advance Course at Fort Benning in Georgia, United States. During this period, he took four years academic leave and received a master's degree in agricultural economies from Iowa State University, ISU, and in 1981, he earned a PhD in economics from the same university. By 1983, Colonel John Garang spent more than four years serving as a senior instructor in the military academy in Wadi Sayedna, 21 kilometers from the center of Odman. Later, he was nominated to serve in the military research department at the army headquarters in Khartoum. At this time, his political ideology was beginning to take shape. If you enjoyed this video so far, consider subscribing to this channel and drop a like on this video. Thank you. John Garang was responsible for the political ideology of Sudanism. This would become the guiding philosophy to a secular and multi-ethnic new Sudan. He urged Sudanese to collectively renounce the belief that black Africanness, Islam or Christianity were to be the ultimate defining characteristics of Sudan. It was also his view that the people of Sudan must not separate themselves into the many existing ethnic factions present within the nation, 
but rather live in cohesion and harmony. However, this was not to be as you will find out shortly in this video. The North-South divide and the hostility between the two regions of Sudan was grounded in religion, oil wealth as well as culture and language considerations. The language and culture of the North are based on Arabic and the Islamic faith, whereas the South has its own diverse, mostly non-Arabic languages and culture, while its religious character is mostly indigenous, traditional or Christian. In 1983, President Gaffa Nimeri declared the whole of Sudan an Islamic state under Sharia law, including the known Islamic majority of the southern region. Following this declaration, part of the Addis Ababa Agreement was breached, leading to the formation of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement and its military wing, the Sudan People's Liberation Army, in May 1983 under the leadership of John Garang. In 1983, as soldiers of the 105 Battalion in Bo were resisting orders to be rotated to serve in the north, Lieutenant Colonel John Garang of the SPAF was sent to quell the mutiny. But instead of ending the Bo mutiny, John Garang encouraged mutinies in other garrisons and later set himself at the head of the rebellion against the Sudanese government in Khartoum. By May 16, 1983, the group, led by Major K.K. Bull and William Bani Macha, launched an impromptu attack on government troops in Bo. It should be mentioned here that Major K.K. Bull and William Bani Macha, led battalions 105 and 107 in Bo and Ayotte, respectively. As a major, Bull worked with William to organize the revolution and create route to the Ethiopian plains. By the end of July, the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, the SPLM, had recruited over 3,000 soldiers into the newly formed Sudan People's Liberation Army, the SPLA, which opposed military rule and Islamic dominance in the country and encouraged other army garrisons to rebel against the government's imposition of Islamic law. By 1986, the SPLA was estimated to have over 12,500 adherents organized into 12 battalions and equipped with small arms and a few mortars. The SPLA strength increased to about 20 to 30,000 by 1989 and about 50 to 60,000 by 1991. William Bani Masha and KK Bull were notable founding members of the SPLA. Bani was appointed as the third highest ranking commander after Bull. This attack would mark the beginning of the Second Sudanese Civil War that lasted for over 20 years and led to the death of more than half a million people. Garang was a strong advocate of national unity, believing that minorities, when combined, created a majority and should therefore rule. John Garang also favored the removal of President Omar al-Bashir from office, replacing him with a government made of representatives from all tribes and religions in the country. The first real attempt in achieving this objective happened in July 1985 when the SPLA led by Garang invaded Kordofan. This objective was backed by Libya, Uganda and Ethiopia. During the fighting, John Garang and his army managed to control a large portion of the southern region of the country, named New Sudan. He claimed his troops' courage came from the conviction that they were fighting a just cause. However, many critics believe he was motivated by financial consideration since the region is richly blessed with oil. In early 1991, the regime of Mengistu's Haile Marian in Ethiopia was overthrown by the Khartoum-backed Ethiopian rebels, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. Upon the rebel seizure of government, they closed all SPLA training camps in Ethiopia and cut off the SPLA's arms supply. This forced the SPLA to return hundreds of thousands of Sudanese back to South Sudan. The move also disrupted military operations and leadership structure within the SPLA. However, it caused the West, especially the United States, to reconsider its relations with the SPLA. From the mid-1990s onward, 
the United States provided SPLA with what they called non lethal support. In August 1991, the leadership crisis within the SPLA deepened, leading to a split. Consequently, Macha and Akol broke out to form the SPLA NASA, and intense fighting between the splinter groups resulted in the Boer massacre and exposed a deep ethnic divide within the SPLA. As the fighting continued for months, thousands of Southern Sudanese people were either killed or displaced by the early 1992. While John Garan wanted a united New Sudan, the SPLA NASA raised the idea of an independent South. On September 14, 1992, Bani, who at that time was Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the SPLA and Deputy Chairman of the SPLM, announced his defection from the SPLA and escaped Garang territory. The following day, Salva Kia Mayadit was promoted from Chief of Staff to Deputy Commander-in-Chief and Deputy Chairman. Bani would then join forces with Macha and Akul and later with Bol to form SPLA United. Meanwhile, John Garang had refused to participate in the 1985 interim government or the 1986 elections and opted instead to remain a rebel leader. However, on January 9, 2005, the SPLM and the SPLA and National Congress Party, the NCP, signed a Comprehensive Peace Agreement CPA, in Nairobi, in Kenya. The CPA marked the end of two decades of civil conflict and was the culmination of peace negotiations facilitated by the Intergovernmental Authority on Development as well as the United Kingdom, Norway, United States, and Italy. The CPA required that at the end of a six-year period in January 2011, a referendum on independence be held, allowing the people of South Sudan the opportunity to choose between perpetuating the power-sharing agreement or opting for full independence through secession from the North. On July 9, 2005, John Garang was sworn in as the country's first vice president. At the same time, he became the president of the autonomous region of South Sudan. However, his democratic credentials as a leader were often questioned. For instance, according to Gil Lorsk, John Garang did not tolerate dissent and anyone who disagreed with him was either imprisoned or killed, and the SPLA was accused of human rights abuses. At this time, John Garang de Mabio was now looking ahead for peace in Sudan, but either faith or his enemies would decide otherwise. On the 30th of July 2005, a Ugandan presidential helicopter was flying over the mountain range between Uganda and Sudan in bad weather. Shortly after taking off, a mysterious and deadly accident occurred and the helicopter crashed, killing everyone on board including Sudanese newly appointed Vice President John Garang de Mabio. He was returning from a meeting with his longtime friend President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda. To this day, the purpose of this meeting and other members in attendance remains a subject of speculation. But according to some reports, the meeting involved heated discussions over South Sudan's oil reserves. Garang was said to have rejected Western demands to renegotiate concessions made to Chinese fame by the Sudanese government. Meanwhile, John Garang had not informed the Sudanese government that he was attending this meeting and hence did not use the presidential aircraft. For over 24 hours, the helicopter had been missing. The Ugandan government therefore contacted the Sudanese government for information on the whereabouts of the helicopter and the vice president. When the government contacted the SPLM for information, they lied. They informed the government that the helicopter had landed safely in an SPLA training camp. This was later found out to be false. However, over 24 hours later, a statement released by the office of the Sudanese president Omar al-Bashir confirmed the incident. The Ugandan presidential helicopter had crashed into a mountain range in southern Sudan because of poor visibility, resulting in the death of John Garang Dimabio, six of his colleagues, and seven Ugandan crew members. 
the official investigation concluded that bad weather and pilot error was responsible for the accident. But the crash site was not easily accessible, leading to theories that evidence may have been tampered with before investigators arrived. While some called for the helicopter black box to be re-examined and even questioned the genuity of the recovered device, others claimed that investigators were bribed to cover up any foul play. Many people point accusing fingers at Western intelligence agencies for engineering John Garang's demise following his defiant stance on Sudan's oil reserves. His body was flown to New Kuch, a southern Sudanese settlement near the scene of the crash where former rebel leaders and civilian supporters gathered to pay their last respect. His funeral took place on the 3rd of August 2005 in Juba. Rebecca Yan Den Dimabio, the wife of the former Sudanese vice president and southern rebel leader, promised to continue his husband's work. In 2007, the widow claimed that the husband was assassinated. She, however, did not lay the blame on anyone in particular. Meanwhile, President Yuweri Museveni of Uganda, whose helicopter was used, claimed that there may have been foul play in the accident. According to him, either the pilot panicked, either there was some side wind, or the instrument failed, or there was an external factor. So, what is your thought on the death of this great African? Kindly you leave your comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to his poll media. Click here for the story of the assassination of Jonas Savimbi, the Angolan rebel leader of UNITA. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.